the Shabab were always engaging us. 24 hours they were engaging us. Big up, big up, Soto. Any Al Shabab who tries to attack us must die. There is no mediation for that. It's for Somalia to again to stand up. It's too late. Somalia is recovering. Mogadishu, the capital city, is enjoying a renaissance with many overseas Somalis returning to enjoy the seaside atmosphere. The city, once known as the Athens of Africa, is brimming with optimism. It is a condition that has not been seen for decades. Thanks to Amisom. Meet Amisom, the African Union mission to Somalia, made up of thousands of soldiers from Uganda, Burundi, Kenya, Djibouti, Sierra Leone and others starting in 2007. African soldiers bringing an African solution to the problems of an African neighbor. Syed Bari ruled as a military dictator and president during the last period of relative peace. But in 1991, civil war broke out and the misery began. Various international missions tried to intervene with bloody results. In 1993, a U.S. helicopter squadron got ambushed trying to contain warlords in Mogadishu. Rockheld propelled grenades took down several airships. 18 American soldiers lost their lives. The famous Black Hawk Down incident ended American and Western efforts to stop the violence and feed the populace. For over 15 years, the world stood by as Somalis suffered. Rival clans fought over scant resources and Islamic fundamentalists controlled much of the territory. The Al-Shabaab, as the Islamists call themselves, would eventually be seen as an extension of the Al-Qaeda terrorist group. But they were not imported fighters, as had fed the conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq. They were Somalis, Africans, and they intended to stay in power and create an Islamic state. Then in 2007, a UN brokered election voted in a civilian non religious government. It survived in a small place in Mogadishu, barely staying out of line of fire until the African Union came to the rescue. Four thousand Ugandan soldiers became the first African force to try and restore order. March 6, 2007, they landed. From the outset, they were under the gun. Uh, the second day, one of our aircraft was shot. So. You could see that uh, the security around the airport was not good. When you looked at how the people were suffering, it was so painful. 
especially the women, the elderly. Meet Brigadier Peter Elwelu, the first Ugandan contingent commander. Elwelu landed with the very first troops. He joined the army at the age of 20 and his father died within a year, leaving him the head of his household. He left a brother and two sisters at home to serve the Somali cause. This is where you would see a problem. You said, why are they suffering? Why are they suffering? It was because it was very, very, very bad. You look at the children in the they did nothing to eat, nowhere to sleep, always running, always dying. Said, no, this type of situation must stop. And nobody can stop it except us. The Ugandan soldiers got a boost late in 2007 when the first batch of Burundian troops arrived. When the Burundians came, um, it was a great relief for us because initially it was almost a Ugandan mission. It was an African mission. So now when we saw the Burundians said, yes, now at least uh, we have a partner, we have uh, colleagues, we have uh, brothers with us here. I'm receiving the flag. We have brought it without a spot. We will carry it back without a spot. Burundi also has been in the civil war since 1993. Burundi has seen how other countries have uh, helped it helped uh, her to recover the security in Burundi. So, to respond for that, Burundi decided to go and help other African countries, especially to intervene in Somalia. Eventually, Kenya, Djibouti, Sierra Leone and Nigeria would add significant troop numbers to the Amazon team. We had taken the posture of uh, real peacekeepers. Stay in the camp, don't go out, don't, uh, and, you know, even when they fire to you, uh, you know, don't respond uh, uh, aggressively. And I think uh, that sent a wrong signal, so to say, to the Al-Shabaab that, you know, they could take us on. For nearly three long years, Amison did its best to protect the new government, the civilian population, and themselves from a potent Al-Shabaab opponent. The Al-Shabaab was close by, you know, and they were always engaging us. 24 hours, they were engaging us. And then there were the bombings. Yes, sir. Two major ones in 2009. One killed 15 Burundi soldiers another the Amazon deputy force commander. The catalyst came when suicide bombers got into Amazon's headquarters and simultaneously detonated two bombs, uh, one at the force headquarters that threw the force commander against the wall and killed his deputy. And I think that triggered a, an understanding within Amazon that sitting, waiting, was not ever going to be an option. The bombings also woke African officials up to the idea that they would have to go on the offensive. Big Apple, Big Apple, Soto. 
He said now that mobility does not help us, the best thing would be now to creep, you know, creeping, uh, going gradually from street to street, through buildings, you know, until he would close uh, with them and then push them back. That's how that concept came about. Because we realized that if we didn't change it, our Shabab would dominate all the surrounding places. It took us about some three, four days to capture a distance of about uh, 400 meters. Every house, every room, you fight in a room, you find he's in another trench, he has dug a hole in a, in a house, and uh, from that house, another house. Second phase was to take Bondere. I used Battle Group 7 to take Bondere. Bondere was overseeing the state house. You could not sit in that state house in Mogadishu, you can't. You can't even walk in the compound, because you'll be shot at. So every time people are in the bunkers, they're down, including the president. The president came and asked me, take me away from here. And it was so touching when the president came to me and said, Paul, take me away from here. Meet Brigadier Paul Lukech, assigned as Amisun Ugandan contingent commander in 2009. Lukech remembers Tanzanian troops removing military dictator Idi Amin when he was a child. This moved him to ask for his assignment to Somalia. Paul is now the Ugandan military attaché to Russia. What we need now is not to over stress ourselves in this tall thicket. Mm -hmm. We need now to either all of us combine a force and we cut, we go to uh, industrial road. So that force ya Lumumba ambao ikuchi, COE, ile ambao tumegawa kwa wale, na lingana na na warumi up. Offensive operations will be harrowing demanding the best from the soldiers and putting them at death's door on a consistent basis. It would also lead to the conflict's turning point. August 6, 2011, Amisom pushes the Al-Shabaab out of Mogadishu. When Shabab left Mogadishu, it was a turning point on our fight against the Shabab because we knew that once they are defeated in Mogadishu, that they, they, when, once they left Mogadishu, from there on, uh, it will be easy for us to defeat them in, the, uh, in, in other areas. Somali government forces also participated in the liberation of the capital. Any Al Shabab who tries to attack us must die. There is no mediation on that. This was the milestone that told Africa and the world that Amazon had made a difference. This was a war 
from the beginning. And war brings casualties. It is very sad to lose even one single soul. It's very sad. Because our coming there was to make sure we preserve that life. Amison has lost scores of soldiers since the mission started. These sacrifices were expected, but are never easy to accept. I remember one, uh, one day, uh, the Burundians lost 53 people, 53 soldiers. So uh, think about it, 53 young you know, uh, boys uh, from uh, Burundi uh, being killed in the front lines. You know, uh, they came uh, to Somalia uh, to save from itself and they lost their lives. The sacrifice is the ultimate price uh, for peace and security in Somalia. In 2010, troops from Djibouti and Kenya were added to the mix. The Kenyan troops came in as there was increasing concerns in Nairobi over terrorist activities. Grenades in the capital and kidnappings on the coast had rattled some nerves. And much of the work the Kenyans would do was outside Mogadishu towards Kenyan territory. During this phase of the mission, there was more technology employed as different terrain was fought on. used to spy on our Shabab positions. Of course, we have been getting a lot of Al Shabab uh, uh, resistance around all these other areas, but we have taken them on. Right now, as I talk, Al Shabab is on the run, and we are pursuing them. And then secondly, they will not deny the people of Somalia freedom or happiness. They must know that the African Union has a mandate to ensure that we pacify Somalia like any other part on the continent. So terrorism is not going to be accepted on this continent. The mission went to sea. We had planned the beach landing of uh, uh, troops are from the sea as a surprise to Ashba because they never expected us to approach Kismayo from the sea. Therefore we doped them and they thought we are going to approach from one direction only to be surprised to find their troops already uh, occupying Kismayo city without uh, their prayer uh, knowledge. The tactics of the Al-Shabaab had changed some as IEDs, improvised explosive devices, were employed on roads leading to the new strongholds as well as in cities as booby traps. There have been improvised explosive devices that have been placed in uh, some buildings in Kismayu. Suspected are the, the Kismayu police station, the Kismayu hospital and some government house. That particular idea is capable of destroying a military vehicle carrying around 30 to 40 soldiers. So it's pretty dangerous because if you lose a vehicle and 40 soldiers in one hit, that would be disastrous. Technology can bite in either direction. Uh, this week, we should be able to... The final piece of Al-Shabaab territory to fall was Kismayu on the coast. Kenyan troops, with the help of the Somali army, finally gained control of the area in late 2012. Amison had now defeated the Al-Shabaab militarily, 
forcing them to operate from outside their country. But the mission is not over. After gaining control of Mogadishu and then other cities, towns and villages, the soldiers discovered other needs. Whenever you're operating anywhere, anywhere as you believe, even at home, even outside, our first priority is to help the population around you. If you get the population around you, you're supposed to give them medical care. You're supposed to share the food you have with them if they don't have food. So it's just part of the army. It's part of our army that we always, uh, we always do that. Food, medicine, shelter. Sometimes just a bit of sympathy and care but what needed dispensing at this point? Uh, luckily enough, this boy, there was no vas major vascular injury. The fragment entered on the medial side, so we are anticipating a quick, quick, quick recovery. Our doctors were co conducting very sophisticated operations. They conducted very, very difficult operations, which really won the hearts of many Somalians. When I was operating there, I decided to open um, health centers. Women could come as far as Ethiopia. You can imagine. For treatment. I think that is really what helped us to win over, uh, to, to stay up to date in Somalia. Strategic relationship with the population having the population on your side. That is it. Days, weeks, months passed. Overseas Somalis started returning. The government became so confident they held another election. That election was the message to Al-Shabaab and the world that civilization had been restored in Somalia. If anything, Somalia had the most democratic ele election, to be sincere. The election is very transparent, they vote there and then, the winner is seen, and then they shook hands. And the elected president is being led into state house by the former president. To me, I thought that was, that was something very encouraging. And they started nation building in earnest. Instead of turning to foreign organizations, they looked to their own. And Amison was there to train firemen, police, to help provide the basic services that allow a society to operate in a civilized environment. I thank Amazon and the leadership of Amazon and the way they organized this training. This training is a vital for Mogadishu. It was quite impossible, a city of two and a half million population without fire trucks. We have to focus on the capacity building. All these institutions, the military, the police, the, war, the judiciary, all this. It's now about getting the Somalis own their country. When you arrive at a crime scene, as a police officer, what, do you, what is the first thing you think about? What is the first thing? <laughs> Do 
It's amazing. It's quite amazing that despite the 21 years of non-governance, that some of them are still quite experienced, and uh, the little, the, the other ones are catching up fastly. And I, I'm quite sure if this process, these democratic processes continues for a long time, within a short period, uh, the Somali police force will, will be one of the best in, in Africa. But the men who have given so much can't help but reflect with some satisfaction. Come on, come on, more. Hop, hop. Sakaras, march. Even the conditions of living have really changed in Somalia. And uh, so I don't know whether I've been in Mogadishu, you can see a number of buildings coming up. The, even the airport is working even at night. Eh? So many flights here and there, that which used not to be the, the case. I, I saw Somalis now go, going back home. Somalis are going back home. This is great for Somalia, great for us all, great for Africa, great for the world. The history should remember African Union force or AMSOM force as a force that went in when everybody else had given up on Somalia. As a force that turned the equation around. And if history is fair enough, it will document all this. They achieved what some of the most powerful countries in the world had failed to achieve. They achieved what most people thought was impossible. They've achieved it with staggeringly few resources and little support. They've done it with intelligence and with courage and with a, a sustained degree of, of military integrity. I believe the African Union has every reason to feel proud, you know. This is one political and military exercise that we've taken up almost on our own and won for the good of that country, for the good of all of us. I think if we look in, uh, in, in terms of the, what have the Somalis gained, because the, why was this mission? The mission was really to help the Somalis to recover their country. But if, when we see the progress which has been made in Somalia, I think the sacrifice is worth it. It's for Somalia to again to stand up on its two legs. Somalia, great country, great resources, great people. When we see Somalis running their country without any problems, taking care of their security, engaging in international activities, we say, well done, Amisom. A job well done, everything okay, God bless Amisom.